Good morning, my love. Good morning. What are you doing today? Well, you have to go over and watch my video to find out why I'm up today. <laughs> oh, come on. Because <laughs> literally, I watch your videos and I'm like, that's literally my video. You're trying to claim that I'm well, no, but because taking spend... your creative? No, it's because we spend so much lovely time together. Yeah. That we are. Lovely time together. Yeah, that we are intrinsically linked. Mm. By our vlogs. So today is Sunday and it is not a chill out Sunday. We're gonna get busy working on things around the house. Uh, I've got some electrical work I want to do. There's a new water feature in the basement that's still yet to be seen on my channel. Uh, so we'll take a look at that today. And I need to put a self timer on it. And so I'm gonna run it maybe like six hours a day or something. I'll uh, have a little Google search, see if there is like time that is suggested to have a water fountain running. Because obviously we wanna enjoy it and the sound of it, we also, don't want to overrun it if it's not necessary. So throughout the night, if it can be switched off, I will do that. But obviously we can't have the water go stagnant and start smelling. So I'm gonna find the bite point, but I need to install that timer, which means that I need to do a little bit of electrical work. So I'm gonna do that first. And then we've had the drip trays for the Cedral Cladden arrive. And the guys that installed it are currently on holiday, having a nice time in the Isle of Wight. So I'd like to wait until they come back to fit it, but they did say if it's super easy and it's just a case of just chucking in a few screws and doing a couple of cuts, they said that I should crack on and have a go. So I might have a look at it and see if it's something I can do because the quicker that we can protect the central from above, the better, because obviously the pressure timber wood underneath, it isn't as durable as the actual central itself. So I want to try and protect that as quickly as possible. So I might have a look at doing that. I've got the two big citrus plants to pop down in the basement which is going to take a little bit of time because they're huge so it might crack on with that as well so yeah just in general loads to crack on with so i thought i would vlog today because it's busy 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 what are you saying kermit stay away from my vlogging content this is my idea it's my book it was my idea <laughs> my you want to take my ideas and incorporate them into your video <laughs> that's what you're saying is it am i right or am i wrong Look. If you want to go and find out what the idea is, you need to head over to Lydia's channel that somebody suggested to me, so it's not even my idea. Who did suggest it to me? I think it was someone on Instagram. Yeah, someone on Instagram, and then Dee said that she used to have a book as well. Yeah, so somebody on my Instagram contacted and made an amazing suggestion, which I suggested to Lids, and then Lids has now taken the idea from the person on Instagram, who I'm going to find out who it is. They deserve the credit. Let's go on to the DMs. Can you key search word DMs? No. No, oh. Um, oh God, it's gonna annoy me so much that I can't find who messaged me this. Another great tip from the Magpie Home was if you used crushed eggshells instead of slug pellets, they're safer for pets and they will also be a deterrent to slugs to stop them from eating the plants. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so that was right. the, the magpie I think home. Been eating our um, wisteria, the one on the right. Oh, I'm so sad. That's annoying, isn't it? Well, thank you to that person. If it was you, you can comment and claim it yeah. in the comment section. Yeah. But it was an amazing idea that I've not spoken about on my channel. But you did suggest it to moi, and Lydia's going to be talking moi. about it on her. Me. <laughs> Is he French? Is that French? Moi. So today's chocolate of choice is the roasted hazelnut. I think this is 80% dark chocolate. It normally says it in big writing, it just says dark. Ah, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Lynn Excellence roasted hazelnut dark chocolate. It's today's selection. I had a raspberry one the other day, it was amazing. You treat yourself to a little bit of chocolate on a Sunday, haven't you, Lids? Yeah, I've already had some. Mm. So that's my chocolate for today sorted. Lydia, well I say that's a lot, I'm probably gonna come back, has currently been working on a campaign with Galaxy Times Vogue, Galaxy which is Vogue. Galaxy and Vogue, which is super cool. And so it's very hard, but somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> I'm gonna help get rid of those for you, okay? I'll take that one for the team. So we're back down in the basement. This is where I'm gonna be sticking the time clock, probably just off to the side there. And of course, to run the new water feature, which I think is the first time you guys have seen it on here. So it's quite noisy, as you can hear. 
So what we're going to do is stick some stones down in the bottom of this, some pebbles, and that will help reduce uh, the noise. It kind of echoes around a little bit in here. So yeah, that will just soften it a little bit. But we have the trees, as you can see, we've had some fallen fruit here and here, which I'm uh, looking into. But we have also had uh, some new fruit buds as well come, which is great. So hopefully, um, it was just a little bit of shock from the plant when I traveled with it that caused some fruit fall. The plan of action today is to get this thing on a timer and uh, also to get these planted and then to put the tops onto the sedral cladding. So if you take a look in here, you will see that we have stocked up with a load of stuff to put inside those pots, which we can go through as and when I do it. Something special for you. Excuse the uh, extremely grubby walls. These are obviously all going to be decorated. Um, but we now have just here our new water fountain time clock. It's a seven day time clock uh, and that will switch on and off the water fountain. However, we decide to set it. Oh, I just trod in an orange. Before I power the water feature up to make sure everything's working and set the timer, I just wanted to go and grab some stones from upstairs. So the pebbles that used to live down here, we're going to use a bucket full of those and we're going to put them in the base of the feature to try to reduce the noise, just so it's a little bit more subtle. When you're sitting inside and the doors are closed, you can't really hear it too much. It's just when you're outside in this area with it, you have to really raise your voice to be heard. So we're just going to try and soften that sound a little bit. Uh, so when we do have people in this area, it's not too overpowering. So before I switch it on, I'm going to go and grab those and uh, we'll quickly pop those into the base. So we've just got some stones into the bottom of the water fountain and it's just started raining, which is really frustrating because I really want to have a look at this central cladding. Uh, so I'm going to give it five minutes, hopefully this rain will disappear, it's just spitting really lightly at the minute. And then we can continue. So now I'm going to jump inside, set up the time clock and get that programmer all ready uh, whilst hopefully the rain passes. So we've now added in quite a few stones into the base. It's now created a lot softer sound of running water, a lot more peaceful. But anyway, I'm going to get busy giving this a little tidy up down here before I get started on the pots, which I have a feeling is going to be a bit of a mammoth task. I want to move with your body, baby. At the moment, I have these sitting on a very slim piece of central cladding, just to try and keep them raised just off the floor to allow for drainage. Just about to remove the plants out of the pots and have a look underneath because I don't actually think that they're high enough. I think they need a little bit more of a gap, but we shall see in two seconds. So I've just swept down the area, as you can see, looking a little bit tidier down here. And uh, then I'm gonna go and sort out how we're gonna be stacking these little bad boys. So apparently these are edible. However, they're really acidic. You can see the little orange slices inside. Yeah, twangy. Ooh. This little beetle's been living underneath. I 
established the position. The first layer that we're gonna be putting in is some terracotta part. This is to allow and help with the drainage and also make sure that the hole at the bottom of the pot itself doesn't get bunged up with soil. So I actually don't have terracotta, but I do have this old vase, which before any of you get upset, you'll see it's got a huge crack down it from when it was knocked over many years ago and I glued it back together. We don't use it anymore, primarily because obviously it's got a massive crack in it and it looks pretty awful. <laughs> so Lid said, why don't you just use that? Saves going down and buying some new terracotta. Um, I don't think that there's any reason why terracotta is particularly good, apart from it's obviously what lots of people have laying around. Uh, so to have a smashed, broken terracotta pot probably is quite common in gardens, but there was nothing around here suitable. So this is gonna serve the same purpose. It also means that we're not going to be wasting any good terracotta pots that we do have that we don't want to smash. The idea is to cover the hole, but not completely, obviously. So there's still a big gap underneath uh, that vase, which means that the water's going to be able to drain down to the bottom and then flow into the hole. And we're not going to end up with loads of soil bunging up that hole so it can't drain out. So first stage complete. The next stage is going to be half a bag of multi-purpose compost. This has just helped to build up the pot because it's quite a large pot. Um, so we're not gonna put ericaceous all the way through. So I'm just gonna do a small layer of multi-compost just across the bottom of both of these. So I'll probably use half a bag in each. In the way that you move, boy, you got it. So it's really dark. Maybe if I go in closer, you'll see. There you go. So just a light dusting of multi-purpose just to, like I say, give us a little bit of height to raise up ready for the next stage. For the next layer, we're gonna be using this ericaceous soil. This is to help with the pH balance of the soil itself. And of course, citrus plants love acidic oil, which is why we're using ericaceous today. But also, mixed in with the ericaceous soil, I'm gonna be using these clay granules. The whole purpose of these is to help allow for drainage, but more importantly, they help with the balance and distribution of water. So they absorb water and then they will slowly release it over time, which means that the plant will get a more consistent flow of water. Okay. Yeah, my bars. Why'd you order them? From the Mark Whittle's new brand. Do you want one? Do you want one, yeah. We've had a little interruption. Mrs. Millen Gordon's just arrived. So yesterday, my friend Mark Whittle on Take Flight Podcast that many of you will probably know about, he's just partnered up with a company to produce his own sustained energy bars. They're called Home Run. I picked them up off Amazon yesterday and uh, I did actually order these myself to help support my friend. You can see they come in this little package here. These are plant-based, slow released energy throughout the day, perfect for when you're on the move. Lids? Guarantee she drops it. Straight for her slippery fingers. It's gone where? Anyway, back to it. Devotion's getting stronger with all that you do, but I'll be waiting. So the next phase, you can now see that we've got the ericaceous soil and clay granules all ready to go. I've also taken a tape measure to the size of the pot. It's 13 inches high. In here, we've got about 15 inches left. I need to make sure that I'm leaving enough space for the other soil that I'm gonna be putting around the tree as well as my mulch that's going on top. So we're about ready now to get the plant into here, uh, ready for third layer to go in. Just before I start this, I better talk you through this because once I've started, I can't stop. So, right here, this is a repotting mix, citrus focus. So this basically is something that's gonna help give lots of nutrients and lots of feed to the plant itself. So I'm gonna put a little wet base of this around the bottom of the plant ready where I'm gonna drop it in. And then I'll finish off by laying this all around uh, the existing potted soil uh, from the plant itself. And then this will obviously help give it a little kickstart and, um, and hopefully give the plant the best chance of survival as possible. Also, when I take the plant out of the pot, it's really good to ruffle uh, the roots around the existing pot just to make sure that you kind of encourage them to sort of start reaching out and establishing itself within this new pot. So. Wish me luck, this is the hard bit, the heavy bit, and uh, I hope I've got my measurements right. Your body, babe. 
with your body, baby Ooh, yeah Yes So this is the citrus focus feed uh, that's just gone on top of the ericaceous soil. You can see it's got its own little granules in it itself. And uh, I'm now ready to take this pot out and rehome it in this ginormous thing. So this bag of white stones, this is what's going to be going on the top as like a mulch, just as a kind of decorative mulch. It's going to uh, match the cladding and uh, obviously will help with the filtration of the water. So I'm going to put this layer on and we're one plant down. In fact, I'm going to clean up before I put white stones in, otherwise my white stones aren't going to be white anymore. seen a frog down in the well I have no idea how he's got down there it's time to save the little fella hello mate calm down calm down oh fuck he's a wiggly one oh calm down oh 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 calm down Relax, we're gonna save you, okay? What they like? Little heart's beating, isn't it? No jumping from up here, you'll hurt yourself, all right? I'm gonna grab you, and we're gonna take you upstairs, okay? Guarantee it, as soon as I go to grab him, he's gonna jump. Gotcha. Right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right, so it's now time to put the stones on. Then you fall back. So this is the last little touch that we're going to be putting on today and this is some feed. I'm going to be using 10 ml with one litre of water. Just going to mix it together and then pour it in and uh, this will obviously help give it all the nutrients it needs, especially because we just moved it. Um, I'm going to water it through and then I'm going to put a cap full of this with a litre of water in it uh, just to make sure I don't rinse this out of the actual pot itself. We are nearly there. This is a bigger task than I thought. I figured you out but you don't know again. So take off your mask, yeah. Love is just a river gonna be to do what we want. I wanna get in shape with you all now. Some basil. So Lids has just prepped a nice risotto for dinner. A nice little bit of fuel in between the potting session. I can't believe how much work goes into just potting one plant. It's outrageous. Just ignore all of this if I'm carrying on cooking afterwards. Okay. That's fine. A sight I thought I'd never see. Are you joking? No, tomatoes. Oh. <laughs> well, you I... just had tomato risotto. I know. I, I never think... ever thought you would have tomatoes. Um... This is I don't eat tomatoes and mushrooms. Well, I don't eat a whole, like I would never grab one of those and eat it. I don't think many people just grab a tomato and eat it like it's, it's an tomatoes. orange. An apple, even. Like, I wouldn't have it on, like, a pizza, like a, a whole... Could you have it in a sandwich? No, absolutely Could not. you have it in a burger? No. If it was sliced and diced, if made into sauce, a sauce? Yes. Okay. Still, preparing tomatoes is a step forward. Well done. We'll get ready for our tomato plants.
Well, what we have here is one freshly potted orange citrus tree. So this is the white stone that I used as mulch to tie it in with the cladding. And uh, yeah, really happy with how that looks actually. It looks really smart. Uh, this one's happily settled, I hope to see how it goes over the next couple of days. I need to do a little bit of research actually as to uh, when the best time to prune these up and uh, if I decide to try to shape it. Slightly more circular, that one at the bottom's got a slightly more round feel to it. This one's a little bit, I don't know what it's doing. Bad hair day. So I might try and do that, but at the moment I just want it to do its thing and keep it as happy as possible. So that's one in. And then if we move down to where the stairwell is, staircase, you'll see that this one isn't quite finished yet so I decided that I wanted to use more stones on top and also I want to put a bit more ericaceous soil into this pot here because I just ran a little bit short which is a bit of a shame because it would be nice to have finished it all today but the dirty bits done as you can see I've had a good clean up down here and uh, rinsed everything through I'm just going to stick the water fountain back on I picked myself an orange this evening I think I'm going to enjoy a uh, glass of whiskey and I'm going to use this as the condiment um, because I can. <laughs> Very happy with progress down here. Unfortunately, I haven't got around to doing the drip trays on top, but it is something that I'm gonna have a look at in a second. So we'll see how hard or easy that is as to whether I have a stab at it or not. These are the drip trays that I was talking to you about. We've got some corner pieces and some through joins. Unfortunately, it isn't gonna be quite as simple as that because we've got a step down around here and we've got the staircase over there. So it's not gonna be the most straightforward of installations, but it's gotta be done, so we'll work it out. So this isn't it installed, um, this is just me kind of like sticking it in place. This is what it looks like from above and this is what it looks like from below and uh, I've just been speaking to Lids about it. We're not fans of this at all so we need to decide what we want to do and how we want to rectify it but I thought this was just supposed to like lip out um, like a ledge but it really wraps around and over like a 90 degree so yeah not a fan of this at all so we have to see whether we extend the coping stones above over but it means obviously we've got to replace all of this which is a big job fresh out the shower Where's the, the old lemon and ginger maker over here i've had my vitamins but i've got my is it seed probiotics i'm gonna bash a barocca as well and this is the ginger lemon tea storage and a Meowy little Bengal coming to. Oh, I swear I saw her. She Houdini'd me. She's over here. I just walked straight past you. <laughs> it was funny, you walked that way and I just saw her tail disappear behind the island. You absolutely done me there, didn't she you? Done it, you? You did. Clever girl. Good morning, everyone. Yesterday didn't quite go to plan. I thought I would brave it and have a go at fitting the cladding. I think you saw a little bit of it actually, and uh, we weren't too happy with it. I continued to try to install some more of it just to see how it would start feeling when it was more complete. And Lids and I were both like, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm not gonna lie, it's not ideal. We have had discussions about getting wider coping stones down the line, um, but obviously it's quite a big project and for now, the drip trays will serve the purpose. So yeah, not not overly impressed with those drip trays. However, they will protect the cladding and be functional. So that's really important as well. Aesthetics, of course, but you need to make sure that when you do renovations that it's gonna be practical, functional, it's gonna last, 
and uh, the aluminium trays certainly will do that. So I am gonna finish putting them up. However, the wholesalers hadn't sent out all of the couplers that go in between the brakes. So I phoned them this morning and I let him know and he's gonna send out some more of those hopefully uh, so I can get cracking on with that sooner rather than later. But today it's really miserable and I'm not upset about it because all of the plants, the grass, the trees, everything's getting a good water because the rest of the week is gonna be incredible. Like 28 degrees, beautiful weather. So I'm gonna be making the most of that and this is just a nice little way of getting everything ready. But I'm just currently sitting at my desk back here again and I'm looking at honey flow. It was highlighted by a lovely girl online, Jessica Watson. She brought it to my attention last week and was like, Ali, You've mentioned wanting to get bees. This right here is incredible. So it's actually been designed by two Australians. I think it's a father and son. And it's a great way for somebody like myself that hasn't got experience in beekeeping. All of your honeycombs all lined up with a perspex or glass visual lens. You can see exactly how the combs are filling up and you literally turn the tap and out pours your honey. I was speaking to Andy, our carpenter, who funnily enough was actually a beekeeper uh, he did a season not so long ago and he was talking to me about basically there is an incredible local bee breeder close to where we live and he apparently breeds some of the best queens in the country which is amazing so he's going to pass on his details so when we do get the hive we're going to be getting some good quality grade queens and uh, he was saying basically queens are kind of primed for about two and a half years but they can live up to about four years and all of the rest of the bees that are looking after the queen essentially do all of the work whilst the queen just sits there and chills and then it goes on a virgin flight, mates, collects lots of eggs or lots of sperm, I don't know what they collect, from the male bees uh, that are far and few between. They fly back and then they've got enough eggs to basically produce whenever they want, I think. They store them in like a sack or something. I'm completely inexperienced in talking about this, so probably just chat a load of stuff and missing some really important things out. But yeah, and it gets to a point where apparently the bees go, do you know what, Queenie, you've had enough. So they kill the queen off or she dies. And then they start feeding this like special kind of honey to the new dedicated queen and they basically like make this bee like the ultra bee which becomes the queen by feeding it special honey that they save for it and uh, yeah it's fascinating so i've got all of this to learn which is very exciting and i can learn all this whilst not worrying about having to understand how to operate a traditional beehive because these guys have invented something that simplifies the whole thing so thank you very much for suggesting that because it's gonna be a great help. And uh, I'm just taking a look at them now. They're not the cheapest, but I think it's gonna be worth it. It's also amazing because when the bees are here, they're gonna be pollinating all of the plants and flowers that are around here as well. So it's just a win-win-win. So just before I move on, so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the company here. Um, I haven't actually read their about section, but from what I understand, they are these chaps there and uh, they have invented these hives. So I'll have a little read through this, but I did watch some videos online and I've taken a look at their products, but you can see just here, this is a really good visual actually. So you can see they've got prefabricated honeycombs in here, which gets the bees started. And then you've got each comb coming down and down the side, you can see that one's full, and then you've got some ones that aren't so full. And then you have this drainage pipe that comes out, and you can slot it into each comb. And then I think this metal bar at the top is something that you turn, and then it obviously opens up and allows all the honey to drip down out into your jar, ready to gift to yourself, your family, your friends, and your neighbors, because everybody needs a bit of honey in their life. It must be these chaps here that invented it. What an incredible idea. Look at these bees go, they're such extraordinary little creatures. Humans and honeybees have this kind of symbiotic relationship where we care for them, they pollinate our crops, and of course, make lots of delicious honey. But getting the golden nectar has always been quite a task. I just thought it was crazy to have to crack the hive open, pull the hive apart, stress out all the bees, and spend all day in the shed just to get your honey. And I thought, hmm, there must be a better way. So my dad and I got to work on what turned out to be a decade-long task of inventing the flow hive. 
So, if you want to watch the rest of that video that I've just shown you a little clip of, I'll be leaving a link to that down in the description box below. So, a little B update. We've got Miss Bill and Gordon joined me in the rear. I've just been watching some videos and I'm furthering my education. So, it's come to my attention that Flo have a couple of different hives. One of them's a hybrid, which is where you can have honeycomb and flow, and uh, one is just purely flow. So flow is basically where you can pour straight into a jar, and honeycomb is where you actually remove the trays. Now, the care and the attention and the checks on the hives themselves are still the traditional methods. Um, so you'll still be ensuring that you've got a healthy hive. However, it's just more the harvesting aspect of it that's really great because it's really simple in comparison to traditional methods. Um, I've learned that males are called drones, the females are the workers and then you have the queen who essentially just goes around all day laying eggs into the honeycombs. The actual combs themselves are two sizes because the male drones that don't really do anything apart from mate, um, they're slightly bigger than the female workers so you end up with different size holes for both and the drones go around from different colonies and mate and uh, the queens obviously fly once in their lifetime as far as I understand it and uh, they mate with those drones and then go back and they basically just fertilize for the rest of their lives so yeah we are learning as we're going along and uh, I think that I've just been speaking to lids I think we are probably best suited to a flow system, so not a honeycomb system. And maybe further on down the line, when I advanced in my honey keeping skills, I might invest in a system that's hybrid, um, which I think is actually cheaper to buy a hybrid than a flow, um, because obviously there's more work involved. But also you get the luxury of having that comb. So, hmm, just thought I'd update you on some of my new learnings. I'm so excited. To have your, the honey here. Yeah. I know. I'm going to ask Andy as well if he wants to come and spend an afternoon just going through some bits when I get it as well. Yeah. And deciding where we're going to put it. And I think that's there. key, isn't it? Location as well. Yeah. So lots to think of. But yeah, the uh, Flow Hive YouTube channel uh, is very informative and uh, it's really interesting. It's really great to watch. So yeah. I'll leave that in the description box as well. So Liz and I are just preparing some food for this evening. I'm on cheese duties and we are trying the new Snowdonia cheeses that we picked up the other day from the garden centre. So Lily is going to be enjoying some smoked cheddar and I'm going to be delving into the whiskey one. I want to try the whiskey one as well. Yes. Do you know what I didn't do yesterday that I was supposed to do? What? Have my whiskey with yeah, my you orange. You were stressed out. I was so, much. yeah, I was so bothered about that baggage. Oh, I get to use my new colander. Have you seen this? Yeah, I have. Pop, 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 pop. These cheeses are lush. Have you tried it? Can you try it? I want to try it. What's the whiskey then? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's lovely. I like that. Do you want to try the smoked? Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I love a smoked cheese. These cheeses are so good. Mm. Granny meow. Oh. The real granny meow. You happy you're home? Some food. Filming, feeding Lumi a mixture of Felix, Gourmet, and Sheba. 
You go through little phases, don't you, where you like different ones? So we have to guess by feeding you it. You're the fussiest cat in the world. Oh, that sounded a bit better. She has moments where it sounds a bit better. That's a good sign, eh? Yeah, I hope so, but sometimes it sounds terrible. So I've concluded that however annoying Lumi's meow is, I would never want her to lose it. Would you? After this, yeah. Because She's never part, lost her meow before, has she? It's part of her identity. It's a whingy cat. Snazzy new tool. Very, I'm very impressed with this, I love it. So you drained it, you've poured it back in. Mm -hmm. And you're just about to... Stir in a big chunk of butter, vegan butter. Is this to add flavour? Yeah, I always like, I mean, gosh, what my nonna does to pasta is, I don't even know what she does, but it's amazing. <laughs> Pre-prepared sauce from yesterday. Homemade. Homemade. You're loving it, aren't you? I am. All this homemade stuff. I can't wait to grow my carrots. Oh, I can't wait for you to grow your carrots either, because I like carrots. Me too. I ordered a whole load of seeds today. Did you? Mmm. Winter veg seeds. This is this evening's dinner then. Pasta with a tomato basil sauce. Neapolitan. With just a little pinch of cheese on top. Lummy! Your voice is back! Lovely! So at the start of the year, Lids and I got into a really good routine of coming down at about 6pm, no later, and sitting down and watching some TV or just generally relaxing. There was even times we just popped on some music and sat here and relaxed. It's a little pact that we made at the start of the year because previous years we found ourselves working really late into the evenings and we decided that we weren't going to do that this year and I've got back into the bad habit. Lids hasn't. You've been quite good. I've been very good. Liz has been reading her books in bed and all of that and I've just been letting the team down. I've been sitting upstairs on my computer, working, doing life admin, doing other things and it's all very productive. I got sick of moaning about it. Yeah, so you just... I'm going to run off with the postman. <laughs> The postman's a woman. <laughs> but that's fine. Anyway. So this evening I was just about to go upstairs because I've literally spent the whole day doing life admin. Things that haven't been productive from a content perspective. Just simply going through doing loads of things. And admittedly, I spent probably about an hour watching beehive videos. Which isn't obviously... Well it is productive because it's something I'm trying to educate myself on before I invest in it. The beehive equipment is probably going to be costing me the best part of a thousand pounds. So I want to make sure that... When I'm spending my money, I'm buying the right one for the first time around. Yeah. Um, because there are a few different options on the site. The ones that I think I'm going to need with the suit, with the gloves, and the smoker, and all of that stuff, it's going to add up. Have you told them about what you thought happened when you had a beehive? That the bees... Like, did, they, did you tell them what Andy educated? <laughs> But there is a beehive, they will come. So I genuinely thought <laughs> if you had a beehive in your garden, you would just pop it up, the bees would find it and be like, this is a lovely place to live. The banging gaff. And move in <laughs> and produce honey. I wasn't aware that you needed to go to a bee breeder and actually buy a queen and a colony of some sort. So yeah. It was a bit of education this morning uh, from Andy as well, which was insightful. Lots of new things learned today, and uh, it's only made me more excited to have bees. Uh, it's not put me off at all. I'm well and truly up for taking a few stings uh, for the produce, so yeah. Anyway, we're gonna sit down and uh, just chill. I'm gonna have an hour, just responding to some comments on my Instagram, checking on my YouTube channel, and then we're gonna stick on the TV. I'm going to relax tonight, and I'm going to get up tomorrow, and I'm going to smash that gym. Feel fresh, fresh mind, fresh day. It's going to be good. It's been a hot minute since we've done this, Lumi. I've missed it. Want me to spread a little bit? 
So if we take a look in the basket, you'll see. I know these are birds. I know this is bird feed. And uh, the squirrels go mad for these nice nuts. So I'm gonna put some of those out for it. No hating on the grey squirrels around here, all right? They don't hurt nobody. I probably have, I'm sure, but. It's gonna run off when he gets scared. Keep it busy for a while, burying all those little bad boys. This video was gonna continue and then I sat down this morning, started editing this together and we are already at 40 minutes-ish. So I've decided that, you know what? We can wrap this one up. It's long enough. So I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna continue vlogging uh, the rest of this week. So yeah, we'll be picking up from around here this time, next week, every Wednesday, as always. I look forward to seeing you there. Take care. Peace.